stocks, bonds, ETFs, straight out of downtown Chicago. This is Zach's Market Edge. Welcome to Zach's Market Edge, the podcast about investing in your life. I'm your host, Tracy Reinick, and this week I'm going solo because, actually, I couldn't find anyone here at Zach's to come on about this topic. So let me explain. A week ago, I got a request on StockTwits to cover the Nash stocks. That's like hashtag Nash, it said in the question to me. And it's N-A-S-H in all caps. And I thought, What is this? Because I've never heard of the Nash stocks. Yes, it's true. I've not heard of those. So I thought maybe this was some kind of new acronym. Maybe it was the FANG, a new FANG. And I was like, well, is it Netflix, Apple, something, something? I don't know. But I did what everybody else does when they don't know what it is. And I Googled it. So I put in Nash in all caps. And then I put stocks, just the Nash stocks. And immediately I've I see that it's in the biotech area because the first article that came up on Google was titled five biotech stocks to play the sector's next big trend, NASH, all in caps. So it turns out what NASH is, it's not an acronym, but it is an actual condition. It's called non-alcoholic steatohepatitis. I'm probably saying that wrong, so tweet at me that I'm saying it wrong, but I know I am. And apparently it's allegedly one of the leading causes of liver cancer. And then a lot of the articles I saw is that it is becoming increasingly prevalent here in the United States. And it's a progressive liver disease that and this is from the Five Biotech Stock article, that can destroy the organ and is projected to become the leading cause of all liver transplants by 2020. And this article said that in the U.S., roughly 15 million are estimated to be in various stages of the disease already. Some of it's probably due to our diet here. But other articles I saw that I continue to look at said that it's estimated 30 million Americans have it right now. So as you can see from an investment standpoint, that is what catches most people's eyes, right? Like the more millions of people that have this condition, the more possible customers of something that will help it are out there. So that's why someone was tweeting at me about the Nash stocks. And that person, when I said, well, what are they to him also said, you know, oh, this is a huge industry and it's like 30 billion or something starts throwing out all these numbers. So I took a look at all of this. And then I talked with Kevin Cook, who covers the medical companies here at Zach's and he's the one who said he's not coming on the podcast about it because the NASH acronym and the NASH stocks have been around for quite some time now. If you look at the articles, you can see them going back a couple of years. And yes, there's definitely the drug companies and the biopharmas that are looking into options to treat this situation because it is out there, as we've said. So there's that. But I wasn't that intrigued by the Nash stocks, to be honest. And there's a lot of other areas that impact even more people than the Nash situation does that you could be investing in that it seemed a little bit easier to me. And one of those is through like heart disease. Why not invest in that area? Because that's one of the leading causes of death in the United States. And obviously, a lot of companies are looking for ways to treat various angles of the heart disease. One of those is Edwards Life Sciences. That's EW, the ticker. It just broke out again. But they are huge. $40 billion market cap. No dividend with them. They're trading at 36 times now because they just broke out again. But earnings is expected to be up about 11% again in 2019. And another 12% in 2020. They have a lot of heart treatments there and so they are kind of the heart experts edwards life sciences if you're looking to get into like one of the largest markets as an investor and then what about companies that are you know just trying to create the tests and things to discover cancers i'm thinking of exact sciences exas is the ticker there 
most people know them as the colonoscopy testing company. And they said on their last conference call that I listened in on that they were researching other tests to do like early diagnosis, like liver diseases as well, which kind of goes back to the NASH thing. The earlier you catch it, the better, obviously, for the patient. So they're only researching that, but that could be another whole area for them. Let's hope so. Fingers crossed. But for them, sales are up 60 0.2% is what it's expected to be in 2019 and another 47% in 2020 as more doctors are now ordering this colonoscopy test versus the one where, you know, it's a little more invasive, the older one that everybody's been getting. So they still aren't making any money though at Exact Sciences. Well, at least earnings side, expected to lose $1.98 in 2019 and 82 cents in 2020. So unlike Edwards, they do not have positive earnings yet. But what about some of the other medical areas that might impact a lot of other people? I consider these kind of to be like the fat areas, but these could be groundbreaking as well. And I've talked about them a little bit in the past on some other podcasts, but I thought I'd cover them again here while this topic about like what areas you should be looking in for medicine right now. But what about like peanut allergies or just food allergies in general? So there's no cures yet on any of the food allergies, but there are some companies that are farther along in treatments that might build up resistance in people and just make it safer for them if they have the allergy. So one of those is called Immune Therapeutics. That ticker is A-I-M-T. And they are one of the ones developing the treatments for the life-threatening food allergies. This is if you have the really severe food allergy. Now, they have a couple things going right now. So they just recently submitted the AR101, the BLA for that one, which is the peanut allergy to the FDA. And this is for treatment in children and adolescents four to 17 years of age. Now, this reduces the risk of the worst reactions, the anaphylaxis following like an accidental exposure. So this is most people's worst nightmare with their child is that they go to a sleepover or they're somehow outside the house and they're exposed to the peanuts and then they have that really super strong reaction. So some of this would reduce some of the risk of that. But again, none of this is a cure for it, but still to be able to just have a little more peace of mind by reducing the risk of having the really bad reaction could go a long way. So this company has now begun 2019. They have 340 million in cash. They're the first company to pass a phase three on a peanut allergy treatment, not a cure, but a treatment. And so some of this is going to the FDA and then they are in phase two of AR201. That's for egg allergy and that's on track for mid 2019 to finish up that phase. So a lot going on with this kind of company and you don't often think of the peanut, but it is a big market. Think of all the kids that have the peanut allergies, many of them extend into adulthood. And so something like this also could be quite a big product. But let's switch on to some maybe I consider the beauty side, the glamour side of medicine. And one of those companies I've been following is called Sientra, ticker is S-I-E-N, and they are a medical aesthetics company. They're in Santa Barbara. And in 2018, they had record net sales. Fourth quarter, also really, really good. Sales up 72% to 19 million in the fourth quarter. And they have two different products now. They have breast products, which are the breast implants. These are like a newer type of breast implant that the analysts are pretty bullish on, actually. And then they have this other product that's really intriguing called Mira Dry. M-I-R-A, capital D-R-Y. And this is an underarm treatment where it basically reduces the sweat. And this is a bigger issue, again, than you might think that a lot of people have problem with underarm sweat and it, it can be cause, you know, psychological issues and things like that. And this is a good treatment apparently for that. And in the, in the fourth quarter, they saw 10.4 million in revenue for the breast products and 8.6 million now for the Mira Dry. And big gross profit also on both of those. The gross profit was 59.7% in the fourth quarter. 
So you're probably wondering like, wow, this sounds great. What's wrong with this company? Well, they had really big operating expenses in the quarter. So they spent 35.7 million versus just 22.7 million the year before. And as you can see, that's more than the sales, but that's due to sales and marketing. So they've really had to ramp up their sales team and they're spending on marketing now on both the products, the breast implants and the Mira Dry, because they have to get doctors and then the patients to understand what these products are, especially the Mira Dry, and they have to convince doctors that they want to prescribe this to their patients. So that all costs money, and so they had a net loss of $24.6 million in the fourth quarter, but they ended the year with $86.9 million in cash, but still the estimates were cut after this quarter because they just spent a little more than what the analysts thought they were going to spend here. And 2019 expected to see a loss on earnings of 277 and then another loss of 221 in 2020. But again, this is a small cap company, just 269 million in market cap, but kind of in some interesting areas. So it might be one to keep on your list. And then when I'm thinking of beauty, the number one that always comes to mind, of course, is Allergan. And that ticker is AGN. And obviously they're the makers of Botox. And last year in 2018, Botox revenue, little over three and a half billion dollars. That's why these areas are of interest to investors because they are one of the big winners of um, actually having a product that is usable and that the consumer is buying. So one area that is really seeing a big gain on the beauty is in the younger people. A lot of these treatments, beauty treatments, especially Botox used to be amongst the middle-aged, let's just say, but now big surge in 18 to 37 year olds. And the marketplace site just did an article about this with millennials also really starting to inject the Botox now. So Allergan has seen an increase of 20% over the last five years in that younger age group, 18 to 37. And that's mainly due to the selfies. You know, you want to look good when you're taking all those pictures and posting them on Instagram. And they're now going in and getting the shots. And that's also leading them to the other world of beauty, which is the fillers. Allergan also makes a very popular filler, the Juvederm. And they recently, according to the marketplace, Erica Barras over there writing about this, they recently increased their marketing budget. They, they tripled it to $150 million to pay to social media influencers to market their products like the Juvederm and the Botox. So if you start seeing that showing up in your Instagram feed by some of these beauty influencers, it's not all about makeup anymore. They might be plugging some of Allergan's beauty products but this is a huge area. She also talks about it in her article that there's an injectable bar in New York City now. I guess we shouldn't be surprised. You can go in and get the injections. But that's another big area is like the medical spas and, and going in for all types of derm treatments, including the Botox, but you might get lasers and other things. And that all kind of plays in on this. But there's a new Botox challenger out there. Just got FDA approval for the glabellar lines. I'm probably saying that one wrong too. That's why I don't like the, the, medical, the medical stocks. But we'll just call them frown lines. We all know these, the ones that go around your mouth that you always want to get rid of. That is called ju Juvo. I know I'm saying that one wrong too. Why do, they, why do they have to make it sound similar? But they do. I don't get it, but they do. And apparently that might be sold at a discount to some of Allergan's types of treatments, maybe to convince doctors that and other technicians that they should be using this product instead of the Botox. And who doesn't like a cheaper product? We all do. But the company that has that new product is Evolus. E-O-L-S is the ticker there. They just reported earnings. And everybody knew about the FDA approval on February 1st. They're looking for European approval maybe by the second quarter of 2019. They just entered into a $100 million senior debt facility, and they've already basically yanked out $75 million. And why is that? Because they're really going to have to market this product now. And as we've seen with the Mirror Dry, 
And those, you know, what they're doing over at Sientra, it's expensive to market these two doctors and to get the consumer to understand what the product is. Everybody knows Botox now, but that doesn't mean you're not still seeing the ads for Botox in every beauty magazine. Yes, I still read the magazines. And yes, they have these big ads in there, including for the Juvederm too. So all across social media and in magazines is where they're going to have to be at. So Evolus, ticker E-O-L-S, they're expected to lose 325 in 2019, but just $1.38 in 2020. So you see some increase there. As of December 31st, they did have $93 million in cash. Then they entered it into the $100 million senior debt facility as well. So they're really ramping up here to take on Allergan. A lot of people, a lot of the analysts, a little more sour on Allergan because there are these threats to its Botox empire. It's only trading at nine times right here. But a lot of people asking, where is the growth? Where's the next great thing from a company like Allergan? That's something to keep in mind. So there's no guarantees on any of this, as we know, but at least Evolus does now have the FDA approval for their product. So if you are too scared to get in before any kind of approval while it's being tested or any of that, understandable, because there are a lot of risks here. Some of these products just won't work and won't be approved. But once you got that approval, it's a little less risky there. So that's something to keep in mind while you're looking at these. So let's recap some of the stock tickers again. So if you're interested in one of the big areas of research right now, which is the heart disease, Edwards Life Sciences is the one for you, EW, and then a company that's trying to just get tests out there to test for various conditions, that would be Exact Sciences, and they've got the colonoscopy one already, EXAS is the ticker. The food allergies is an interesting area, and they seem to be getting closer there as well. Immune Therapeutics, AIMT. Then we had Sientra with the underarm treatment and the breast implants, S-I-E-N, but they're spending a lot of money there. And then Allergan again, A-G-N, and then Evolus. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong, but we all know the ticker E-O-L-S, and that's one to keep on your list as well. So there's a lot going on with the medical breakthroughs and I'll be keeping the NASH acronym on my, my short list as well, be taking a look into some of those stocks, but you don't have to just be in that one to be in some of these companies that are innovating because they always are and you can be in the beauty side and also see some innovation. So that's something to keep in mind. And you don't necessarily need like the full blown cure as we've seen with some of these food allergy type of stocks is that they're just looking to get something that can ease some of the worst developments if you have one of those allergies. So, so yeah, there's a lot going on and I'm going to keep covering this and hopefully I will have Kevin Cook back on to talk about the innovation. He's joined me on the show many times for a lot of the innovation talks on the medical side, but just not really into the Nash stocks right here. And that's okay because there's plenty of other ways to play it. And remember, you want to get all of our podcasts and the Market Edge is now on Spotify. So get us on Spotify. You can get us in India as well. I know they just launched out there, but if you haven't been able to, to subscribe to our podcasts over in India, you can now. So get us on Spotify. And you can also get us on SoundCloud where you'll get two for one shows. You'll get both the Market Edge and the Value Investor Podcast, which I always do solo. But you'll get some stock picks there on the value side. But be sure to subscribe somewhere so you don't miss a single episode. And I'll see you again next week with some more stocks.